Hi, I'm attorney Melanie Williams. Welcome to Hill and Ponton's video blog. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about special monthly compensation, um, specifically higher levels of care and aid and attendance, as well as uh, special monthly compensation for TBI. Special monthly compensation is a level of compensation that you get on top of the regular 100%. So we know that if you get a 100% rating or if you have individual unemployability, that's the highest amount of benefits that you can get as far as we know, right? That's about $3,146.42 to be exact each month if you are a veteran with no dependents. However, there are certain situations where you can get an amount on top of that each month. So it's a very specific set of circumstances, usually where veterans are severely disabled to where it warrants an, an amount higher than that 100%. So there are several different kinds of special monthly compensation. Each one is known by a different letter. So there's SMCK, SMCL, SMCS. Um, there are different levels to it, again, depending on the level of disability. Um, there might be uh, loss or loss of use of an arm, a hand, a foot. Each one kind of has its own criteria that you would have to meet. And I'm not going to go into all of them because there is a lot and it can be uh, somewhat complicated. So I would advise that if, if you are a veteran with a severe condition, so usually the conditions that we see this for most common would be um, Parkinson's or peripheral neuropathy um, to the point where you lo lose feelings in your hands and your feet. Or it could be if you have blindness or um, something along those lines. So if, if any of those are something that, that you think you qualify for, I would advise to talk to an attorney and help you walk through step by step what those levels of special monthly compensation look like and what you might qualify for. One of the most common ones that we see is called aid and attendance. Aid and attendance is when you need the regular aid and attendance of someone to perform your personal functions of daily living. So this is if your activities of daily living, if you're not able to do these by yourself and you need someone, um, a spouse, um, a friend that you live with, a family member care for you, um, then you might qualify for this disability. So some of the factors that the VA considers are, uh, are you able to dress or undress yourself? So do you need someone to help you button the buttons of your shirts or put your socks and your shoes on because you're not able to do that by yourself? The ability to keep yourself ordinarily clean and presentable. Um, are you able to feed yourself? Are you able to attend to the wants of nature? So toileting, is that something that you're able to do by yourself or do you have to have someone help you? Um, as well as uh, protect from the hazards of or dangers of your daily environment. So that would be, for example, um, I know a lot of veterans who have difficulties either because of uh, TBI or um, just their mental impairment. They're not able to cook and prepare their meals because it's not safe for them because they tend to leave the stove on or they may not be able to um, recognize if something is dangerous or um, basically they're not able to care for themselves. They have to have someone living with them. Those are things that the VA looks at when determining if you are entitled to aid and attendance. Now, there's an even higher level of special monthly compensation because aid and attendance by itself would get you $3,915.14 each month. And that's a difference of $768. So if you had 100% versus this aid and attendance, you'd be getting $768 more. Now, the higher level on top of that, this is known as SMCR2, and this would entitle you to a monthly amount of $9,004.64. So that's about $5,800 more than what you would get if you were a 100% disabled veteran. Now, to meet this higher level of care, that's what it's, that's what it's known as, you have to meet uh, certain levels of the special monthly compensation, um, which again, I would advise an attorney or a VSO, someone to kind of help walk you through and make sure you meet those qualifications. But specifically, the higher level of care that they'll be looking at is you need to have uh, the need for personal health care services on a daily basis in your home 
by a licensed healthcare professional. A licensed healthcare professional would be a doctor, so either an MD or a DO, um, a registered nurse, a physical therapist. Now, if it's not someone that's licensed, it doesn't have to be someone that's licensed because it could also be someone providing services under the regular supervision of someone who is licensed. So some of the uh, services that we're talking about would be physical therapy, administration of injections, uh, the placement of catheters, changing of sterile dressings. Um, so these are things that usually you would need a professional to do. And if it's not a professional, it could be a loved one. It could be someone that you're living with, your spouse, a parent. If you have a sister that's a physical therapist, if you have uh, your spouse that's a nurse, all of these things would qualify if they are providing this care for you on a daily basis. Now, if it's someone that's not licensed and they are doing it under the supervision of someone who is licensed, they would have to be following a regimen prescribed by that healthcare professional, and they would have to be consulting with that healthcare professional at least once a month. So there's uh, several steps that go along to making sure that you meet this higher level of care. But again, if that sounds like something that you might need, you'll want to look into this and ask uh, your attorney or someone who's familiar with this, uh, with the different levels of special monthly compensation to be able to help you. Now, there is another way to meet this higher level of special monthly compensation, and that's through what's called SMCT. So that's specifically for if you have TBI, if you have a diagnosis for TBI and your service connected for TBI. Now, the requirements there are you would need aid and attendance. So the same things that we looked for for the regular aid and attendance, the ability to dress yourself, feed yourself, all of that. The difference for the TBI special monthly compensation is that without that regular in-home aid and attendance, you would require hospitalization nursing home care, or residential institutional care. So basically, are you able to live by yourself? And if you're not, would you need to be institutionalized or living somewhere where you were receiving that care? Now, something to keep in mind with TBI is there are lots of, of secondary disabilities that come with TBI that you could also be entitled to a separate rating for. So TBI comes with its own list of conditions that could result from it. So some of those would be headaches, um, a separate mental condition like depression, visual impairment, hearing loss and tinnitus, seizures. If each of those conditions or any of those conditions is severe enough to warrant its own rating, then you should get a separate rating for that. So TBI is one of those conditions that has a lot of different facets to it. So you wanna make sure that you're getting all of the benefits that you're entitled to because of that. So these are things that we don't normally think about. Special, com special monthly compensation, as you saw, it could make a huge difference in the monthly amount that you receive. So if it's something that you think you're entitled to, reach out for help and see if you can meet each of those criteria to be entitled to those extra level of benefits. Thank you so much for joining. If you liked this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to our page, and be sure to follow along for all of our additional content. Bye.